Hello there, Ray here. We just got some brand new information about archaeology and that is through the Minecraft official Twitter saying uncovering a 1.20 feature coming soon to snapshots and betas. Archaeology saying finding suspicious sand blocks near desert temples and start shoveling. Using the brush tool, reveal hidden items including pottery shards. Put four shards together and create a pot. So if we go down here, we can see they actually have these images showing each of the things that they talked about. So here they're actually showing the desert temple, they're showing what the pots look like, and they're showing the brushes. These pots do look quite a bit different than what they were showing us like in the 1.17 Minecraft live events, where they're showing like a clay pot that we would stick the different shards onto, and then we cook it up. And after cooked, then it would turn into this kind of cooked clay looking block. The brushes also look a bit different too. They had a couple different colors they showed. And this one looks like more of a thinner and delicate one. They're showing this by the desert temple, which is a structure where you're supposed to find these like lumps of sand and dig into them. Let's look at the next picture. Here they're actually showing a desert village. So these are our villagers and they're showing some of the pots. So I'm guessing maybe some of these pots are part of the structures and will just appear. Or maybe they're also going to add it. So besides just desert temples, you might find these sand piles near desert villages as well. In this image, they also show you what the shards look like. So this shard is a little bow and arrow. We got one of a skeleton head. Uh, this one's a diamond. Here's a little character with his hands up in the air. And in the third photo, we can see inside of the temple, they got a couple of jars lined up. Looks like these might be the four different images that they have so far. And they do have like openings in the top. So it might be possible to actually put stuff inside of these pots. Hopefully they give them some sort of function. So they're not just like something that looks cool. There's also a link to the article on their page. Let's go ahead and read this and see if it gives us some more insight. It says, news archaeology coming to Minecraft 1.20. Dig into the history of Minecraft. It says, you've read that correctly. Dear reader, archaeology is coming to Minecraft. But that's not all. We're going to be revealing the remaining features for 1.20 as well. So keep an eye out on Minecraft.net and our social channels. You can start digging and dusting and testing out all the new features in snapshots of betas and previews. That'll be coming very soon. Keep in mind that this is just the very first iteration and we will be adding in a lot more as we continue to develop this feature. Then it goes on to explain how to see snapshots and betas. There's more detail about archaeology in this paragraph here saying, when you're ready, you can start with your new career as a Minecraft archaeologist or M archaeologist as it's known colloquially. Head out to the nearest desert. That's where sand lives. Yes, yes, beaches have sand too. Good for them. But we're looking for a special type of sand today. Pick a nice plot near some desert temples and start shoveling. As we continue to work on archaeology, more dig sites will be added. So keep sending us feedback and checking in on future snapshots and betas. While you're digging, look for new blocks, suspicious sand. As the name suggests, you need to tread carefully or rather brush carefully. Along with new blocks and a general air of mystery, archaeology also brings new tools, the brush. Break it out and carefully brush off your blocks of suspicious sand. This allows you to extract whatever is hiding within, which can be anything from pottery shards to random objects. I also mentioned besides finding shards in the suspicious sand, you can also find random objects. So there'll probably be like a loot table with some things being really rare and some things being more common. In past Minecraft live events, they did show stuff like diamonds or emeralds coming out of it, but they did specify that those were placeholders for probably other items. So we'll probably see an assortment of different things, kind of like when it comes to like bartering or fishing, where some stuff is not as useful as other. So we got some more images down here, which we take a look at. Now the way you actually make the brush could be a few different things. The brush will probably be something that the player can craft. That way when he's out at these different locations and finds a suspicious sand, they could just craft up a brush rather than the brush being something you have to specifically find at a certain location. It probably consists of like a stick and maybe some string or maybe some feathers. Looking at the image, it definitely looks like the brush could be made out of like feathers. So we looked at these images and this one here, they have a pottery without the shards on it. So it's possible you can make the pots and then just add the shards later. The actual archeology span part will get you the pottery shards and not necessarily the pot. So you'll probably still need clay in order to make the pot. Now in the game, we already have flower pots, which are made just using three bricks. So it's possible that this new recipe for the big pots will be something like this, kind of what we use for cauldrons. And then once you craft it up, it would look similar to like the same brownish color. And wouldn't even have to like cook it up. Where before we talked about archaeology, they talked about having to make your own clay pots, probably out of like clay balls. And then after you have the pot, then stick in the shards and then cook it up in order for it to actually show up like this. 
So it will be interesting to see how they implement it, if they'll make it kind of harder to put the pieces on or if they'll just let you easily slap them on with a simple crafting. Since some of these pots do have no images, it does seem like you could possibly make ones without the shards, which would then probably cost clay. Or it could be when you find the shards, you put the shards into the crafting table and once you have enough you can craft your item which would be the probably the simplest way they could do it similar like how they did it with this music disc 5. if it is going to use clay then you could definitely use something like my clay farm which converts stone into moss then dirt then mud then clay so you get large amounts of it automatically or you use like my hero of the village raid farm where villagers will give you clay as a gift that way you can prepare for the 1.20 update What's interesting about this photo is that you can see when they stacked the pots on top of each other, the knob kind of disappears. And if you look at this image over here, this main blocky part is like a full block. But then this little knob actually goes into the next block. So I wonder if it's going to be like fences where there's actually a collision with this top piece, or is it just going to appear to be taller, but when you actually walk on it, you'll walk inside of this little knob that's there. I'm guessing it's visual because when you stack these on top, it completely vanishes. Let's continue reading. If you look closely at the pottery, shard you can see that the, the particular pattern is painted on it once you collect four shards you can then put them together for a pot there are different patterns that tell unique stories and make for a very decorative accents to your builds so having nice pots sitting outside can give it a more natural look it goes on to say speaking of unique stories a secret library that i found and now officially live in is filled with them but also contains an extensive travel section which where i found a journal that was as mysterious as it was dusty it was stuffed between the overworld atlas and a stack of nether travel brochures i didn't know what i was expecting but it was certainly wasn't the string of numbers that were listed on each of the pages this could be a secret code phone numbers to a former minecraft.net writer or it could be someone super secret seed log am i going to test out that last one by entering some of them into my game and see where i spawn while you're pursuing the seed and getting ready to dig like you've never dug before, check out the instructions on how to get into the snapshots and betas. This last paragraph here almost acts like there is a secret message somewhere. It might give us more insight into what archaeology is going to be about. But it seems that we'd first have to figure out these numbers that they're talking about. So if we take a closer look at these images, we can see around this desert house, there is sand that looks slightly different. It has almost like kind of like a spider web look on top of it and this is probably the suspicious sand that they're talking about which is actually a new block and that's the one you actually sweep away with your brush to get access to the new shard so here this is a desert well we can see a suspicious sand there as well and this image here we can see the kind of spider pattern on the side of this sand here so that's considered suspicious sand there's none here inside the temple and in this image here we can see there's actually quite a bit of it one there one there 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 and even there and this is in front of the temple, but it's actually flat on the ground. So it's not like a, a lump of sand that might be really obvious, but at least you can see with the texture that it is different. And that's where you actually use your brush. And because these chunks of sand are limited for how many there is per structure, it's not like you can constantly keep coming back here to get more and more items. You'd have to do more exploring if you want to get more whatever they provide. So the sands and the shards will be a non-renewable resource. The way they're doing it with Suspicious Sand is different than how they originally showed it during the Minecraft Live event, where they showed actual structures where you go down into and brush away certain blocks. And you can also see like buildings and houses that are buried up. Now with archaeology coming in 1.20 and also smithing templates coming in 1.20, they could kind of work together to bring archaeology to these different structures, which would also encourage players to go exploring. Now, currently, they only talked about suspicious sand, which would only make sense in different structures which have sand, such as like the desert pyramid. But they also show other structures like the water well, which isn't actually the same structure that would produce smithing templates. But you could imagine they could do a similar thing with like different types of dirt or grass, like, like suspicious grass block or dirt. And they could do something in the nether dimension as well, maybe gravel that's suspicious. When it comes to the end dimension, they could always add in something new like suspicious end stone but when you think about using a brush to sweep away something you're not really thinking about going through stone but dirts and gravels and sands would make sense now in minecraft there's actually quite a few structures some of them are underground we also got structures that are above ground these would probably be the easiest to add in the archaeology and the suspicious blocks which can be used to find other shards and trinkets now to make it somewhat realistic they are focusing on places like deserts because it's easier to find artifacts and do archaeology in deserts just because there's no vegetation that's hiding things where you can find really cool stuff like in jungles 
Like in real life, they found a lot of the Maya stuff inside jungles, but it's very difficult because there's so much vegetation that covers everything. You can imagine something like the ocean runes, which already have these chests, which offer cool loot, could also have the gravel with them. It's something that can be swept away and maybe you can find cool artifacts. Though I do imagine doing it underwater would be tricky. This also allows players to go to places where they would normally not visit, such as like the desert well, which doesn't have chest. So now there's a reason that you go there. Now in real life, it can be hard to find human artifacts in places that are cold. So there might not be one at like igloos, but there could be like suspicious snow. In some cases, cold environments actually preserve stuff very well. And something like rune portals, which can be found in the nether as well as overworld, because these structures already have gravel. So it could be easy to implement the suspicious gravel in those situations. Now, archaeology is a study of past humans, so there are probably not going to be any references to like animal fossils or like the different fossils that we find in the overworld or the nether. But they are supposed to be telling us about the past of Minecraft and its history. So, so far we can learn that there was players, there was bow and arrows, and there's skeletons, and there was diamonds. Those must have been really important things for the past Minecrafters. But I'm sure they'll add in new images as we go forward, and maybe there'll be unique images to specific structures, encouraging people to go out and explore. What other images do you think should be placed on these? Everything else we know about 1.20 in this playlist here, or this one all about secrets in Minecraft. And I play around with the newest snapshots every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at my live streams over at Twitch, where I stream for at least two hours. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye.